In this video, we're going to start looking at solving simultaneous equations. In the past, most of the equations we've seen have only had one unknown, or if you like, one variable. An example might be 2x minus 1 is equal to 9. So the only unknown we have is x. In this particular scenario, when we have one unknown, we only need one equation. So I'd add one to both sides, so 2x is going to be equal to 10, I divide both sides by 2, and x is equal to 5. We might have a quadratic equation, x squared minus 49 is equal to 0. Adding the 49 to both sides, x squared is equal to 49. Taking the square root, x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 49, which is 7. So yet again, only one unknown to find, so we need one equation. We're now going to look at solving simultaneously where we have two unknowns. An example might be 2x plus y is equal to 10 and 3x minus 2y is equal to 8. So here we have now two equations and two unknowns. If we have two unknowns, we need at least two equations. Now, with this, we could use trial and error to find them, but generally speaking, the techniques we would use now would be different to that to find the values of x and y. It's not possible just to simply keep substituting numbers in to find combinations that work. So, we're going to start off in this video looking at linear simultaneous equations. Lots of this will be revision, and then later on we're going to move on to examples where we have a linear and a quadratic, a linear and some other non-linear, and then two non-linear equations. So let's start off now with some basics. We're asked to solve the following linear simultaneous equations for x and y. These are linear because x is to the first power and y is to the first power. So we've not got an x squared, we've got, not got a y cubed. Also, there's no multiple of x and y or there's no division. So these are simple linear equations. If we wanted, we could draw a straight line for each of these two. So I need to solve for x and y. So this one right here, we have now 2x plus y is equal to 4. That's equation 1. And then we have x minus y is equal to negative 1. And that's equation 2. We're going to look at two different ways of solving this. The first way is simply by eliminating y. The way in which we can do this is by adding equation 1 and equation 2. If I look, the coefficient of a number in front of y is the same. So when I've got plus y and minus y, that will cancel out. So if I add these together, 2x plus x is going to give me 3x. We've got y plus negative y, which is going to be 0. Then we've got 4 plus negative 1, which is going to be 3. So by adding the two equations, I've now eliminated y. Dividing both sides by 3, we can see that x is 1. We now need to substitute this in. So all I'm going to do is choose one of these equations to substitute in. I can choose any. I'm going to choose the top one, so we'll have 2 lots of x, which is 2 lots of 1, plus y is going to be equal to 4. So, substituting in now, we've got 2 plus y is equal to 4, so we can see that y is going to be equal to 2. So, we solve those simultaneous equations, and we've got x is equal to 1, and y is equal to 2. Okay, now that's the first way. We will have seen this technique in the past. What I'm now going to do is rewrite these equations and I'm going to use something called substitution. So the first equation will stay 2x plus y is equal to 4. On equation 2, I'm going to now add y to both sides and add 1. So if I do that, I can say that x plus 1 is equal to y. What I've done here is made y the subject. We can now go ahead and substitute this in to equation 1. So equation 1 becomes now 2x plus y. Well, now our expression is x plus 1, and that will be equal to 4. 
So I've eliminated y by substituting in. The advantage of using this method is that when we have non-linear equations, we can't go ahead and just simply add and subtract using this form of elimination. So if I just look at this now, we've got 3x plus 1 is equal to 4. Subtracting 1 from both sides, 3x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 1. We do exactly the same now, substituting back into either one of these equations. I'm going to choose equation 2. So we've got 1 plus 1 is equal to y. x is 1, we know that. So y is going to be equal to 2. So exactly the same answers as expected, and we can check that they hold true for both equations, but we get the same answers either way. So if we look at the first equation, 2 lots of x, well that's 2 plus 2, that gives me 4. If we look at x plus 1, well x is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, so they hold true. Okay, let's go ahead and do the next one. Now, with this one, we've got 5x minus 3y is equal to 3, and 2x plus 2y is equal to 14. I'll start with the method of elimination. When we use the method of elimination with these linear simultaneous equations, we need to make sure the number in front of either the x is the same or the y. So at this stage, I'm going to look at this equation here and look at this one. I'm going to multiply this one by 2 and this one by 3. So I've got equation 1. I'm going to multiply that by 2. I've got equation 2 and I'm going to multiply that by 3. The reason I'm doing this is that that will give me now the same value of a coefficient in front of the y. We can then look at eliminating y from that. So if I multiply the first equation by 2, I need to multiply all of the terms. So 10x minus 6y is equal to 6. So this is equation 1. Equation 2, I'm going to multiply by 3. So we get 6x plus 6y. And multiplying 14 by 3, we're going to end up now with 42. That is equation number 2. You're probably thinking, well, why didn't I change x's? I certainly could have done. I could have multiplied this equation by 2 and this one by 5 to get the x's the same. Okay, these signs are different, so I'm going to do 1 plus 2. So 1 plus 2. If they're the same, now we would subtract. So if they're different, we add. If they're the same, we subtract, as we've seen previously. So I'm going to add these two. So 10x plus 6x is 16x. The y's are going to cancel. Minus 6y plus 6y will be 0. We've got 42 plus 6. That's going to be 48. 16 into 48 goes three times. So x is equal to 3. I can now substitute x is equal to 3 into any of these equations. So if I look at this one right here, I'm going to put it into equation 2. So 6 times by 3 is 18 plus 6y is equal to 42. Subtracting the 18 from both sides, 6y is equal to 24. Dividing both sides by 6, y is going to be equal to 4. And we've got y is 4 and x is 3. So let's just look and check that those work. Well, 2 lots of x, that's 6, plus 2 lots of y, that's 8, that equals 14. 5 lots of x, that's 15, minus 3 lots of 4, which is 12, is 3. So they hold true for both equations. Okay, so that's a method of elimination. I'm now going to look at the method of substitution. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and write that equation 1 is 5x minus 3y is equal to 3. I'm going to divide equation number 2, which is this one, by 2. And that will give me x plus y is equal to 7. So, with equation 2, I could actually write equation 2 now as x is equal to 7 minus y. So, here I've made x a subject. I could have written this now. As uh, the other way around, I could have said that y is equal to 7 minus x. Really doesn't matter. You might prefer it uh, doing it this way uh, with the negatives. Entirely up to you. So what I'm now going to do is use the method of substitution. So I've made x for subject and we're going to substitute it into 
equation one. So we've got five lots of x. Well, that's seven minus y minus the three y will be equal to three. So we can see 35 by expanding the brackets minus 5y minus the 3y is equal to 3. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 3 from both sides and add 8y to both sides. 8y is equal to 32 so we can see that y is equal to 4. I can substitute that in just here or just here, entirely up to me. So we can see that x is going to be equal to, so this is equation 2, 7 minus y. So x is equal to 7 minus 4. And we can see that x is equal to 3. We knew that as we found that just here. We've got it just there. And we know that y is 4 because we've got it just there. Again, I'm using here the form of substitution now on this one and simple elimination on this one. The more flexible you are with these, the better. But if you're going to go for one method only, substitution will work now for all of the equations that we look at. Okay, let's look at this one right here. Now this one, I could go ahead now and make the coefficients the same. Um, entirely up to me. Alternatively, the substitution is a lot easier. So with equation 1, I'm actually going to write that equation 1, now adding 1 half y to both sides, x is going to be equal to 1 half y. Now, alternatively, what I could have done at this stage is multiplied both sides by the value of 2. So we could have said that y is equal to 2x. It's entirely up to me. You might look at this and think to yourself, well, which one do I want to deal with? I think I'm going to deal with this one right here. I, I just think it will make my life slightly easier. Entirely up to you. So I'm going to substitute this into equation number two. So we've got one third x plus 2y. Well, that's going to be 2x. And that will be equal to negative 13 over 4. That's 4x. This is going to give me now 1 third x. So I write another line. 1 third x plus 4x is equal to negative 13 over 4. This is going to be 12 over 3. And this is going to give me another 1. So let's go ahead and write this out. So that's 12 over 3 plus 1 over 3. So that's going to be 13 over 3x is equal to negative 13 over 4. I can divide both sides by the 13 and multiply by 3. So x is going to be equal to now negative 3 over 4. That's the value of x. I can substitute this in now and find the value of y. So using equation 1, y is equal to 2 lots of x. So y is going to be equal now to 2 lots of this value, which is going to give me negative 3 over 2. So that's what we end up with, and those are my answers. We really need to check that these hold true, and of course we can do that by simply substituting in to do that. Now if you wanted to do this on a calculator, you could do, or you could check there. So that is using the method of substitution. When I look back at that, I might want to do it a different way, but again, that's one possible route to do that. If I'd said that x is equal to 1 half y, I could have gone ahead and substituted this in. So what we would have had is 1 third, and substituting in x is a half y, is going to give me 1 half y plus 2y is equal to negative 13 over 4. So if I look here, I'm going to have 1 6y plus 2y is equal to negative 13 over 4. At this stage, I can write that this is going to be now 13. So 2y is going to be 12 over 6y plus 1. 13 over 6y is equal to negative 13 over 4. Dividing both sides by 13 and multiplying both sides by 6, we can see now that y is going to be negative 6 over 4, which is negative 3 over 2. 
we can simply substitute this in now at this particular stage. We know that x is going to be equal to one half y. So x is equal to one half of y. So x is going to be equal to one half of negative three over two. So x is going to be equal to negative three over four. And we can see that's an alternative way. Again, if you wanted at this stage, you could go ahead and multiply this equation. Uh, if you wanted by a third to get them the same, you could multiply this one by four to make the y values the same. It's entirely up to you. The method of substitution, though, will hold true when we're dealing with linear and non-linear equations. So that might have been a bit of a brief recap, uh, but in the next video, we're going to look when we have some examples of linear and non-linear equations.